People often ask me, hey Josh, why are Class B vans so expensive? And you know, I really didn't have a good answer and I didn't like that. So I did some digging and what I found, I thought was pretty interesting and I'm excited to share with you. Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd here with Bish's RV hanging out in Oregon today looking at a pleasure way. Now, this is one of three of the most sought after Class B vans out there on the market. Interestingly, as I dug into this, I found all three were privately held uh, businesses, coincidentally, interestingly, all out of Canada, like family owned. Like there was a lot of these interesting coincidences here and one of those was they all seem to demand a pretty high price tag yet these things have like two and three year waiting periods on some of these and I wanted to understand why. So I started doing some digging into this and I'm going to go about this a little bit differently today rather than showing you here's all this floor plan and like I think you're able to look at this and I think you understand that that's a bathroom and that's a kitchen like you get that. What I want to do is to describe and talk about more about this company and how they operate and their materials and the equipment that's on this and those little differences that define A to B to C and it was very enlightening and very eye-opening to me and I'm sure you can tell I'm really excited about this like I never really understood these before and I, I'm really glad that I learned about this and I even whether you're curious or whether you're serious about getting one of these I hope you find this beneficial today so Pleasure Way again is a family owned privately held uh, Canadian based company uh, I believe they were founded in 1986 and uh what what this company does it's like they're, they're it's one of those the few and the proud kind of mindsets they have very few individuals actually putting these things together and what that does is it gives each of them the time that it takes to do their job specifically right without overlapping without tripping over somebody without worrying about oh here's how quickly all this has to happen or anything like that it's not a ramrod slam them together as fast as you can kind of product it's a very different thing that they're doing right here and as we go through this i think even on camera, especially when you see it in person, but even on camera, I think you'll get to see those differences. And if you appreciate how sometimes I say, you know, I don't know, but we go digging like this to try to find that extra insight for you. If you're new with us, hit that subscribe button, learn something else the next time around. And if you're a returning member of the RV Nerd Herd, leave me a comment and let me know, or just say, hey, thanks, nerd. So again, today we're doing kind of two things. First of all, more formally welcoming Pleasure Way to our channel here. I think I've only touched a couple pre-owned years past. Never, never really knew much about them. I could tell it was nicely well built, but again, that's kind of the whole goal today. Why, um, not just necessarily looking at this RV, but trying to sort of tackle the question, why are B vans more expensive? Now, again, some background on Pleasure Way. This is um, uh, one of the, I think there's only three or four remaining uh in the class b market like independent privately owned companies not uh owned by you know forest river thor winnebago anything like that not that there's anything necessarily wrong with that just pointing this out but it's interesting there's these three family owned privately held canadian companies like like this like road trek um that are just ultra ultra popular they're also more expensive and yet they have these ancient waiting lists so why well, basically, it's all around us. And I just had to learn how to read it better. And we're going to start like right here. Around 2016, I think they started including this uh, technology package. Well, Pleasure Way did. But this is a little more involved than what you're going to find in a lot of common towables. What I love about this is it's very in-depth but it's very easy to understand. Like on our on our homepage, you've, like just direct normal thermostat things. You can check your um, generator. You can see where are my power outlets, my AC source, where is that being powered by? And what I thought was really cool is over here on the electrical page, it tells us this has a pair of onboard lithium batteries, and that's another expensive thing. B vans are becoming like, by default, a lot of lithium battery stuff. So this has two 100 amp hour lithium batteries, a total of 400 amp hours. Um, it tells you the temperature of them because you don't want to charge lithiums when they're frozen. That's really, really bad. It tells us where our AC power is coming from. This has a 2000 watt onboard inverter. That's another thing that adds a chunk of money. Um, some towable RVs have some inverters, but usually they're pretty minimal. This has a very good one that can run every single thing with the exception of the roof air conditioner. Also, this on the roof has three 100 watt solar panels. Now, towable solar starting to catch up, but um, this is again something that they've been doing a little bit longer. And um, that is like one of several ways to keep those batteries charged up. 
the, uh, um, let's see, you can charge it via the, you know, obviously the solar package there. When you're driving, you, the, uh, the engine alternator basically will also charge those batteries. And they actually, um, they take the factory alternator off of these and they upfit to a, uh, a larger alternator so that even sitting at idle, this will still charge your batteries. So like someone's gonna say 300 watts of solar is not a great deal. Well, yes, but there's multiple other ways that they are getting this stuff all charged up. Additionally, this company is still including uh, by default an onboard generator, which a lot of B vans have started phasing out as like lithium and solar and things like that have started kind of peaking their heads up. Generators are not cheap, especially on uh, the diesel chassis. They use a propane generator. On the gas chassis that they build, they will use a gas generator. Now, on that note, um, all those different chassis in the Pleasure Way will have one major difference on the inside here that I keyed into very quickly. And that's this factor, the headroom. Uh, the, uh, I think the Ram Promaster chassis is the shortest. I think it's about 6'2 or 6'1. We're in the Sprinter Mercedes chassis right now. It's 6'4 inside. So as you can see, like I've got some, some decent head roll, I guess. If I don't slouch, if I really stretch out, it's not as far from my head. Like when I, when I walk, I tend to creep for some reason. Creeper, I don't know. But the Ford Transit chassis, that actually has six and a half foot of interior height. That's cool. But this is another reason these things run a couple more bucks. Uh, very similar to like a diesel pusher. This has this um, like sound deadening foam pack soft touch ceiling liner. Because the thing is, when you're going down the road, this is different from a towable RV experience because you're in it. In a towable RV, it can rattle trap around and make all the bang and clang and noise in the world. You don't care. It's behind you. You're in the truck. You don't even know about that. When you're in a motorhome, you're in it. You hear every little thing. So they're doing more here to deaden that sound, to give you a, basically getting there, making that just as enjoyable as being there. And that led me into the materials here. It took me about half a second to walk in and touch something and go, oh, that's different. Um, so many of my videos are in the towable RV industry. And a lot of the times in the towable RV industry, they can build cabinets by stapling things. You cannot, you literally cannot build the cabinets that Pleasure Way is doing with staples because all of the cabinetry is plywood and it is laminate wrapped. Uh, to give you an idea, uh, as opposed to the towable RV industry, which uh, sometimes there's only just a simple sheet of Luon defining a cabinet, uh, and then it is uh, basically wallpaper wrapped. Well, that's totally different. They literally must screw all the cabinetry together. Now, here's another thing I thought was really interesting about Pleasure Way and, and some of those more high dollar B vans uh, in general. They have a much smaller and uh, dedicated labor force that have like been with these companies for ages. So like in most, um, you know, mainstream manufacturers, they have a production line. Pleasure Way doesn't have that. They have like 14 stalls and they, ha they have an electrician, they have a plumber, and then they have the, the person that builds everything else. One person builds all of the cabinetry, installs all of the cabinetry, um, puts everything in its place. And that is a very different process. It's very slow. It's very laborious. And it takes a lot of time. And time does add up to a cost vector. But the thing is, in a, uh, a traditional production line method, one worker hands work off to the next one without the, the second guy actually knowing that the first one was complete in their duties. When one person does the same job every single time, they know what's been done. They know what hasn't been done. Now, as I started looking at that, I started getting down low here and looking around. And I noticed like under this cabinet, it's one entire piece of three quarter inch plywood. And then this rear cabinet is one single piece of three quarter inch plywood. And then that uh, repeats itself over here. So basically by using fewer seams, they're creating less area for, for noise, for squeaks, for creaks, and increasing the strength of this stuff a great, great deal. Now, Pleasure Way does, uh, there, there's a hill basically that they are willing to die on and that they actively pursue a wider walkway here, which is something I noticed because that's one of the things I've kind of been uh, tripped up on in a lot of B-Vans. They're very, very narrow. 
Well, basically, from the bathroom door handle to the kitchen countertop is 24 inches. It's the widest in the industry in this segment, and they make sure it is at least 24 inches all the way through. That hill they're willing to die in, though, does pigeonhole and shoehorn them into one thing. This model that I am in is their only floor plan that is still forced only a gas electric uh, two-way fridge freezer. That's a six cubic foot variety, by the way. All their other stuff is using 12 volt compression fridges. Uh, if they did that because that fridge is so much deeper, they would not be able to maintain that extra wide walking width. Now, whether that, you tell me, is that smart? Are they good to, you know, is that a line that they should keep riding? Is that a mistake? Let me know. Uh, now, again, on this one, the roof air conditioner is the only thing that the uh, the inverter won't run for you. But again, you do have that propane generator right there. Um, and uh, I don't want to sit here and, and like just preach the floor plan to you very much. So what I'm going to do is um, kind of let this footage speak for itself as we start looking at the RV in all kinds of different forms and functions. Like you saw that pivot twist around lagoon table right there. Very, very popular in the B market starting to really... Uh, open up in the, uh, the um, what I want to say, towable market as well. Um, the uh, woodwork in here, again, that extra thick plywood, you see the solid surface countertops, induction cooktops. The trend that you're seeing is a material premium RV all the way through. It's higher grade materials that cost more. It's, uh, you know, superior workmanship by a master craftsman that costs more. But the goal is to make a better, more reliable product. The thing is though, that comes with cost. There's an old phrase, you can have speed, uh, you can have cheap, or you can have quality, but you can only pick two. And, and I mean, really, you know, I wanna shake my head and say, no, 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 all three should be possible, but I don't know. Like the older I get, the more that stuff like that makes sense. Like the, the, uh, the aircraft style, like self latching, um, you know, clasps on all the cabinet doors so that you don't like clip them as you're walking through. All that stuff runs a little bit more than the traditional little like spring loaded things that you find in towable RVs. Uh, it, it, it's a hundred little, like death by a hundred little paper cuts in these is I, I think one of the best ways that I can describe it. Now today we're on that uh, Mercedes chassis. And one of the things that I think is very interesting here is it actually has not a driver one, driver two setting, but actually three programmable settings for these chairs. Now, obviously the passenger seat can spin around as you're looking at right here. And that's where I think number three is cool. So let's say you're taking a long road trip because these things are awesome for road trips. Driver number one, driver number two. That makes sense if you flip flop driving. But number three, that one of my friends here advised me locally at our Oregon store says, that is what you set for when you're in camp mode. Number three, you can set the chair how you want it for this position right here uh, up in the cab area. And that made a ton of sense to me. Now, they have this little um, kind of uh, extension thing right here. Of course, I can't get my hand on it the proper way. But basically, that pops out if you if you got longer legs like mine. Um, the uh, Mercedes chassis, obviously that, uh, you know, uh, turbo V6 right there. The only thing, like, I, I, I like, it drives nice. The only thing I've kind of noticed on that is when you, um, basically, what do I want to say? If you hit the accelerator, I almost said hit the gas, but it's diesel, so that would be dumb. When you hit the accelerator, there's a slight delay, and then it kicks in with a vengeance. That's just the, it takes that turbo just a moment to kick in there. And then it picks right up and does what, uh, you know, you, you tell it to. Now, over here, LG televisions, they're not using, like, the, the cheapest thing they can get from whatever supplier. They use, like, a better name brand kind of appliance right here. But so far, a lot of this has been pretty, like, what you can see. Where this really started to make sense to me is when I started looking below the surface. And using, like, just this one seat as an example. This is actually, it, it, the problem is you can't see the stuff. This is actually a three layer like memory foam composite because this could also be your bed. You have a dense layer, a medium layer, and then a cooling layer on top so that you're not sweating to the oldies. And this is a material called ultra leather. This is not that kind of fake pleather stuff that a lot of our towable RVs have that gets flaky and peels off of your sofa after a year. Um, this is stuff, it's like pet friendly. 
you can scrape your keys across it. Obviously, I'm not going to do that because I don't own this RV and I want to respect the next person's property. Um, if somebody gets pen on it, you could, uh, you know, you can work that out of there. Um, it's pet friendly, you know, against their claws. I don't know if I mentioned that or not. But again, where you weren't even looking, the little notched, uh, you know, plywood stuff that they're doing here to keep that cushion in place in transit, the way that everything is sunken in and recessed. And how about this? Anybody in the w ever have to get a wiring schematic from a manufacturer in the towable RV industry? It ain't always easy, and it's slow, and it's annoying. They they give you the wiring schematic right here, right from the factory level, and we start to see some cool things as we pop the hatch right there. And this is tight quarters, but there's so much. Like, I look down in here, and I start going, oh, I, I see some nice things. Like, first of all, if you look down, all of your wiring is in a loom done by that master electrician, and everything is secured in place. So this stuff can't shift and rattle around in transit. It can't rub against a sharp edge and vibrate and cause a short. Um, it, it's, it's, insulated, it, it's made for road use, which makes sense, but not everything is like that. This isn't like, you know, this is a part of the reason that this stuff runs more than a lot of like tow bar And again, here's where they're using the, I think I, uh, breaker. They're using relays, not, um, uh, not fuses right here. So that things can be checked. Now, uh, they use a Truma heating and cooling system on this. And that's another thing that's more expensive than, than common, like, uh, RV, you know, heaters and whatnot. You see one of the little heat vents over there just above the carpetless floor in front of the refrigerator. So they're using a, uh, a, a Truma furnace and a 60,000 BTU ultra fast recovery, uh, tankless on demand water heater. So that's a big, to give you an idea, like a lot of towable RVs have started going tankless water heaters. They are typically like 30,000, maybe 35,000. I've seen a couple 40,000 BTU tankless on demand water heaters. This is using a 60. I, I don't, I, I think you could understand right away why that runs, you know, more money. Again, all these outlets inverted, uh, you know, the uh, more outlets as well. They're putting them all over the place here. Um, it, it's the, the overall material structures. Actually, there's one area on this RV. I saw it. I was like, wow, that blew me away. And it's these corner seams back here above the rear sofa space. I had to look. I had to get right up close. I actually, from here, I wasn't really sure. I thought this was one piece. It was some kind of custom corner molded piece. I had to get under it so I could actually see it is two separate pieces. The, the seamless way all this comes together is crazy. And what I learned is this company has one person that has built every cabinet door in every pleasure way since 2008 to today. RV factories typically don't have employees to stay around that long. I'm sure that guy gets paid very well. But I think if you see these in person, you see that the workmanship is vastly superior to, we'll say industry standard work that you see out there. But naturally, again, that comes with a little bit of price tag. That's kind of that topic that we're tackling today. Now, if you were doing the math and you paid attention, you might notice that they're not using side valances here on these pleasure ways. They're using nice blackout roller shades too, although they're using a white shade so it reflects a lot of sun. But with the curvature of this body, I was trying to figure out how are they going to keep it from, uh, you know, dangling down. And basically, it has cool little magnet uh, anchors at the bottom point of this to keep it hugged against the wall. That's just brilliant. Um, you may also notice that sound deadening ceiling we talked about. The walls are literally the same way. Also, because they're not using those valances, that gives them four extra inches to play with. That is why they're able to have that wider walkway. It's literally the windows, the way they do the window treatments that gives them wider walkways. That also means they have deeper uh, overhead cabinets. And storage is a problem in a lot of Class Bs. So this is an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. We're all familiar with those, right? This is one of the very few brands because that extra four inches that can actually accommodate and secure an 11 inch dinner plate in their overhead cabinets. It's, it's just a hundred thousand million billion zillion different little things here. Now, um, I don't think I demonstrated this, but yeah, that TV can pivot around. But what I wanted to show you here is I talked about the composition of this, but they've got three quarter inch plywood backing, uh, their back cushion, their bottom cushion, all of the cushions. Because again, that might be your bed too, but 
it's just it, there's more of it it's thicker it's better it's higher grade it just keeps going and for entertainment here um smart tv so you got all your you know you, you can do your hulu and your netflix but blu-ray i get questions all the time people go why did the rv industry just skip blu-ray well these didn't now every class b van's a little different pleasure way is one of them but again this is part of the reason that they run a little bit more money or of course you just always got your wine guard antenna up here so something i like to do uh assuming i remember a couple times recently here i kind of forgot things i like to give you an extra look at the weights and the measures here uh while we're outside because i think sometimes some of that starts to become more relevant now uh again today we are on the uh like mercedes sprinter style chassis there are uh, you know, like uh, the Ford Transit chassis, there's the Ram Promaster chassis, um, and this company kind of uh, dabbles with all three of those, essentially. So they all have slightly different, uh, you know, benefits, advantages, drawbacks. They'll have different things like in different ceiling interior heights and or um, different uh, potentially tow ratings and things like that. So they all kind of, um, they, they all have a, a couple ups, a couple downs. It really just depends on the exact specific features that, you know, you might be seeking, like the, the Sprinter chassis here. Um, it's got that uh, V6 turbo diesel right there. And this also um, seems to be one of the few remaining uh, builders of products like this in this Class B van uh, category still standard with an onboard uh, generator. Now, when you're uh, looking at the Mercedes diesel chassis here, it will be a propane generator, which is actually my personal preference. On the gas chassis, it will be a gas generator. So why am I more of a fan of propane? Well, basically, uh, not because Hank Hill, because I sell propane and propane accessories. It wasn't my best Hank Hill impression, but I'll work on that. It was a little bit more of my old man, uh, you know, Herbert kind of thing, but neither here nor there you don't care about my the list of names of my impressions but what i'm getting at is i like the propane generator because it's a clean burning inert gas it doesn't gum up the carburetor it doesn't foul out over time so um if you haven't you know not everybody's going to like get one of these things and live in it so if you haven't gotten in this you haven't turned the key you haven't fired up the generator in two months four months longer a propane generator is just going to fire that's the cool thing. It doesn't foul out. And if you ever talk to a small engine mechanic who's done, uh, gen, uh, you know, engine work on something that's, it burns propane, they're like, oh yeah, no, the inside, the guts of those things are far, far cleaner. Now, you can see here, uh, well, uh, they, they've got that armless kind of uh, awning, which is really nice. And this is another interesting thing they do. That master control center that they had on the inside, um, it's got like, what I like about that thing is that it's very easy to understand. Like, it's just written in plain English. And one of the page, uh, pages in the diagnostics page is the faults page. Um, when they, the way they do their wiring, instead of fuses that just burn out, they have um, like uh, uh, relays, basically, that can be reset. So if something goes wrong, like you accidentally extend that awning too far and it like, gets stuck or something like that and it pops the relay you can get it reset you can get it retracted like you're you're not stuck without a fuse you're not sol or anything like that which is sol i can't even spell sol half the time you have two exterior uh color options on these um the other one would be like a uh, a silver and what's cool is they um they match up with the uh the, uh, the paint codes for the manufacturers so like this being the mercedes let's say um you know unattended neighbor child johnny i think everyone who's camped has has met Johnny, whether his name was Johnny or something else, we've all met the unattended camping child. Um, and, uh, you know, let's say that they, they throw a rock and they, they scratch or ding up your stuff or something like that. Well, you can get a hold of Mercedes, you can get a little thing of touch-up paint, and you can erase little Johnny's signature calling card on your RV so that you're not stuck with it till the end of time. Now, we're very close between a couple things right here, but notice where like all of your hardware is located, it's all at like waist level. It's all very easy to access. And once again, we're looking at the um, the gas electric two-way fridge, kind of like breather panels right here. Uh, this is, again, the only model that they are making that is forced to that two-way fridge so that they can maintain that nice wide walkway. Uh, that's one, that is a hill that apparently they are willing to die on. Now, in case you were not aware, if we come back here, this has an extremely high level piece of hardware. You've got a propane quick connect sticking out the backside of this thing. But you know what it's called when the gas comes out the backside? 
Well, that is nerdism number 37, and that is a pro penis, ladies and gentlemen, right there. Now, depending on which chassis you get, you're going to end up uh, mathematically with different um, uh, towing capacities. Here on the Sprinter chassis, theoretically, this could uh, pull 5,000 pounds. However, if you start doing the math, like if you have max cargo loaded into this and whatnot, that will actually mathematically equate to a 4,200 pound uh, tow reading on this. But of the uh, the Ford Transit chassis, uh, I believe has the least, and I think the Ram Pro Master chassis is a little bit in between. So those are those extra little details that our individual uh, RV outfitters can dig into for you. Again, each chassis has advantages, each chassis has drawbacks. That's why we have our outfitters to help find which one matches up best with the exact sort of goals and things that you're looking to accomplish. Kind of like I'm still trying to figure out what goals of my life I'm looking to accomplish. <laughs> I think that's supposed to be called like your high school counselor, but uh, mine basically told me I was beyond hope. <laughs> so let me know, was this beneficial for you? Like so much of my channel has been total RV based, but I'm, I'm still trying to learn. I'm still trying to expand. And if there's something I've missed, let's do some little kind of crowdsourcing information in here. If there's extra pieces of the puzzle I haven't shared today that you happen to know, please leave comments. One, to help me, but two, to maybe just help other people, whether they're curious or serious out there. I'll leave you a link in the description to see where we have any of our Pleasure Way RVs parked and uh, asking prices on a given day for a given model. And short of that, till next time, take care, stay safe, have fun. And happy camping, everyone.